So now we proceed with trinomial. Again, the trick is you consider this as one term. So what I'm doing here is that I just add bracket. Okay, I add bracket. This is my red term. 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 And then this is my blue term. This is my blue term. This is my blue term. And this is my blue term. And notice that I'm matching everything. So this is blue term. I have n minus k. This is n minus k. Okay. And then this is power k. This is power k. And also, of course, n k. This is n k. And similarly for the sum. Okay. So I'm matching everything. So that's how you get from the first term equal to this. This basically just add a bracket. And then by the binomial theorem, you go from here to here. So now I just established showing you that this guy is this guy. What's next? Look at this guy here. What is this? This is just p and q to the power. Instead of n, I have n minus k. What I'm going to do is that for this blue guy here, I'm just going to cast this again. So this whole big thing is the blue term. This is n, this is n, this is n, this is n. But now here I have n minus k. So this is n minus k, this is n minus k, this is n minus k. But let me make it clear, okay? And also, I'm using k as the index here. But I have already used the k for this part. So now I'm using j. Okay, so this k equals 0 is j equals 0. And then I just basically copy everything. Then I just reuse the binomial theorem twice. I get the trinomial expansion. That means what? That means I just show you this guy is this guy. So what's next? Move the thing around. So first, this term and this term, they are what? I just write it here. By definition, this bracket is just this guy. What about the next guy? n minus k to j. So n minus k factorial, n minus k minus j factorial, and j factorial. And you see, this n minus k and this n minus k are the same thing, so they cancel out. Okay? They cancel out, give me this thing. So if I rename this n minus k minus j as i, okay, I just rename, okay? Then this yellow term become what? i factorial. Then I can what? I can now rewrite these two okay, term and combine these two summation sign into this. So what I have? x plus y plus z to the power n is what? It will be summation sign with three indices, i, j, and k, okay? The only condition is i plus j plus k has to be n. And then I have this n factorial divided by i, j, k factorial. And then, and then power is x to the power k, y to the power j, and z to the power i. And you know what? This ordering, usually we will say x to y to z, and now we have x to the power k, y to the power j, and z to the power i. Oh, it's confusing. I can just swap the order. I rename k as i, and I rename i as k. Then I have this. They are in the same order. Now this feels more comfortable. Then I have this, right? Okay. So this equal sign means I just rename k as xi and zi as zk. So just swap the ik, okay? There's nothing changed. So I get this. So that means what? This thing is this thing. What is this? This is trinomial expansion. And moreover, this term, I can write it in this form, which is trinomial coefficient. So example, suppose I want to expand x plus y plus z to the power 4. It will be summation of i, j, k, such that i plus j plus k Give me n. n is 4. And then what? n i j k, right? 4 i j k. And then what? x to power i, y to power j, z to power k. Okay, so that means I need to find three number, which is i, j, k. They sum together, give me 4. So what are those numbers? Well, you can think of 4, 0, 0. So that's exactly this term. If i is 4, j is 0, k is 0, I have this term. So i is 4, right? So x power 4. j is 0, right? So there's no j. K is 0, right? There's no K. So that means no Z. So these two, I don't write down. So I have this term. Then what's next? I want I plus J plus K give me 4. But I have already chosen I is 4. So the next thing I can do is to make this one smaller. I have 3 here. Then I have a 1 left. I can distribute this one either to this box or either to this box. So according to the lexicographical order, that means J come before K. So I will first put this one into J. So I put this one into J. Then it give me 3, 1, 0. So that means... What? That means i is 3, j is 1, k is 0. I get this. So x is power i, x is power i, x is power i, i is 3, so x power 3, j is 1, so y to power j, that means j to power 1. k is 0, that means no z. Okay, so this is what I have. Then what's next? I can also move this one to the other box, right? I move this one to the other box, then it gives me 3, 0, 1. 3, 0, 1. That means i is 3, j is 0, k is 1. So x to power 3, y to power 0, and z to power 1. Okay, that's this. What's next? After that, I have to drop this to 2. And then what? I drop this to 2. That means I have two spaces left for filling these two boxes. I can just first put the 2 here. Then I just put this 2 here. Then it gives me 2, 2, 0. So that will be 2, 2, 0. And then x square, y square. And then what's next? For this 2, 0, I can make this 2 become 1, 1. 
Okay, then what? Then I will have x square y1 z1. x square y1 z1. And this is 2, 1, 1. And then what? I can move this one to the last box. I will get 2, 0, 2. So x square z square. So that's how we get this one. And then what's next? After that, we have to go down for x. And then I have 3, right? So I can put the 3 here. That's how we get this one. And then I will reduce this to this. So that's how we get this one. Okay. And then after that, I swap these two. I will have these two. That is this one. And lastly, this one. So what is this process? Okay, let me explain a little bit what is this process. So this 1, 3, 0, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 0, 3 is like what? Imagine you have three boxes. So this one, you have one box. That's the one. And then this one, you have three boxes. That's the three. This one has nothing. So what is this going to here? It means you move these boxes to here. It gives you what? It gives you, this is first boxes. And then you have one boxes, two boxes. And then you have another boxes. So this corresponds to this one. And then what's next? You move these boxes to here. Then it gives you one boxes, one boxes, and then two boxes. And lastly, you move these boxes to here. And then you will get one boxes, nothing, and three boxes. Okay? So this is the picture. How do you proceed? So basically, it's like you're moving boxes from the second position to the third position one by one until all the boxes in this position is gone. Okay? And then lastly, in the last case, we will have what? I, J, K have to sum to four. And let's say I have zero. That means I have four values to distribute among these two boxes. That means what? I have four boxes. Two, three, four. So this corresponds to zero, four, zero. And then what? That is a four, zero. I move one boxes to here. Then this boxes is gone. Okay. And I have one boxes here. This corresponds to zero, three, one. So I, zero, J, three, K, one. Zero, three, one. What's next? This one move to here. Then I have I, zero, J, two, K, two. Okay. This one. And then what? This box go here. It will be. 0, 1, 3, and then the 1 go here, it will be 0, 4. And using these boxes, you can now write down all the coefficients. So basically, this kind of ordering, let me write down the full ordering. It's, here's a name, this is called lexicographical ordering. So you start from 4, 0, 0, and then 3, 1, 0, and then 3, 0, 1, and then 2, 2, 0, and then 2, 1, 1, and then 2, 0, oh, 2, and then 1, 3, 0, oh, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, and then so on, 1, 0, oh, 3, okay? And then 0, 4, 0, okay, I don't write it. So let's look at what's the pattern here. If you look at here, let's say your eyeball is here. If you look here, you can see from this order, this number are decreasing. 4 go to 3, 3 go to 2, 2 go to 1, 1 go to 0. Okay. And if you look from here, let's say now your eye is here. Okay. You will see the same thing, but slightly different. So what's that? So here, first of all, I need to make sure you are very clear. Okay. So now I draw three red bars because they are from different uh, first boxes. So now suppose you look at here. So what do you see? You are seeing this is 0, okay, but then if you look here, it is 1 and then 0, decreasing, 2, 1, 0, decreasing, 3, 2, 1, 0, decreasing, okay? And then lastly, if you look at the third column, so you look at the third column, well, again, you have to see it referring to the previous guy, so you have to chop it like this, okay? But because this time you don't have two cases, so that's why you cannot see any pattern. So basically, the idea is that how do you get this kind of number, 4, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, the, you follow this order, this is called lexicographical ordering. It's something like A before B before C before D before E, something like that, okay? This is like the, the ordering, okay? And then, here's the first thing, the numbers are lexicographical ordering. The second thing is, how many terms are there? Well, we have three things, X, Y, Z. Recall that all these terms have power 4, this guy is power 4, this guy is X, 3, Y, 1. The combined power is power 4. This guy is x squared y1 y z1. The combined power is 2 plus 1 plus 1, which is 4. This guy has power 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 4. So all the terms have power 4. But you have only x, y, z. So what's the picture? The picture is you have four boxes. And you are allowed to select from x, y, z to any of them without any rule. Okay? So if you select with repetition, for example, x, x, y, y, then you have repeatedly select x and repeatedly select y. So what is it? This is selection with repetition or combination with repetition. So this is what? This is three things because you x, y, z. Choose, okay, how many things? Four with repetition, okay? With repetition. So that is three plus four minus one, four, okay? What is this? So it will be three plus three, four. It will be six, four, okay? It will be six factorial, two factorial, four factorial. It will be six times five divided by two, okay? That will be what? Fifteen. How many times? How many terms? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, you see? 15. So this is the connection of the number of terms of a trinomial expansion to combinatorics. Okay, 
So this is the second thing. What about the third thing? There's a funny, interesting thing. So let's look at all these numbers, okay? And now suppose I draw a coordinate. This is 4, 0, 0. So this point is 4, 0, 0. What does it mean? It means x coordinate is 4, y and z coordinate are both 0. So for y, it touched the original. For z, it touched the original, okay? And what is x is 3, y is 1. So x is 3, y is 1. Okay, y is 1, right? So somewhere here, okay? So that will be here. And then what's next? This is x is 3, z is 1. So x is 3, and then z is 1. Okay, so here, okay? So somewhere here. And then, what's this? x is 2, y is 2. So x is 2, y is 2. So somewhere here, okay? And then, what I'm going to say is that if you plot all this uh, number on this plane, okay? For example, this is 0, 4, 0. That means x is 0, y is 4, and z is 0. And then if you plot this 0, 0, 4, that means x, y is 0, x, z is 4, you have a point here. And then if you plot all the points in this plane, in the end, what you will get? If you connect all the points, you will see a triangle. This thing actually is, uh, is a simplex, okay? So what is this shape? This shape is here is 4, here is 4, and here is 4. So it's like you have a, it's like you have a pyramid, okay? So let me, let me draw like this, okay? So each of the line here, so the width here is 4, okay? The width here is also 4, the height is also 4, okay? And the corner are those, this is 0, 0, 4, this is 0, 4, 0, and here is 4, 0, 0, okay? This is a simplex. And actually, these coefficients will be all the points on this triangle that are integer. That means if there are some point on this line that is an integer, it will appear in these coefficients. So this is another way of how do you uh, find out these kind of coefficients. Is you just draw a picture and find out all the dots, the integer dots, okay? Or you can just follow the algebraic method. That means you start from four and then you move the mass to the other boxes, okay? And then you move the mass. Or you think about the boxes. You have four boxes, okay? And then you keep moving to the right, okay? Or you can think about the lexicographical ordering, okay? Okay, that is decreasing, okay? That are all the ways you can do to proceed on how to compute the trinomial coefficients. And once you understand the trinomial coefficients, then it is the same for multinomial coefficients. So here I have four terms, n is four, right? So it will be, it will be what? n, and then there are four numbers, i, j, k, l, okay? And then again, this n is four, so I have four, four, zero, zero, zero. So this is the first case, and then what? I have four, three, one, zero, zero, okay? Which is this one, and then, and then what? Four, three, zero, one, zero, which is this one. And then I move the one to the other guy, it will be what? Four, three, zero, zero, one. Okay? And then you keep going on, four, two, two, zero, zero, four, two, one, one, zero, and so on. Every time you move one box to the right until you cannot move anymore. So this is how you decompose a quartic power four, okay?